come again? As if my prime minister going blackface wasn't bad enough. This is sweet, sweet. That Starbucks creamer is on one. Hey loves, it's your favorite lying chick back on your screen is another one. Hope you're all well. As the title tells, we're gonna talk about one of the best shows ever made. Atlanta's Back, season three, episode one and two have dropped. I know I don't usually talk about shows on this channel, but I just had to. There was too much going on in these episodes. I said, I need to share with someone. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you like this kind of content, hit the like, comment down below what was your favorite part of this episode and let's go. Episode one opens up really eerie. It's giving get out vibes. There's two men, Lake Lanier, that's already problematic, okay? Because if you heard about Lake Lanier, if you're a tea sipper, you follow Lovely Tea, you already know. There's a town under there. So when he was telling the story, this wasn't a new news, but it's kind of like, hmm, I like the spin that Atlanta Donald Glover is taking with this new season. So he's telling the tale about a town that was flooded out. And then he gets into an even stranger soliloquy, arms grab up man, and then we go into phase two. Is it Inception? Was that what Aquarius was dreaming about or was that just a random interjection? Who knows? This is the world of Atlanta, right? Now this is the quick rundown of what happened with Aquarius. This is a boy, I don't know how old he is and I don't know what time it is because I checked my invisible watch and Black Panther 2 did not come out yet. But he's losing it. He's acting a fool in class doing the most because the teacher just announced that's where their field trip is gonna be. What kind of field trip is in movies? What kind of funding is going on? Anyways, I digress. So then he gets sent to the principal's office. The mom ain't got time for that. She said, why don't you just send him to detention? Don't call me down here for this. So she does what a lot of parents do. You wanna act a fool, act a fool. It's giving Matilda, you know? So he starts dancing. Then he gets three slaps, the title of the episode from his grandfather. I said, what kind of weird slaps are those? And the teacher is so horrified. She called children's services. The mom opens the door, said, Laquarius, you call the police on me? Okay, take him. <laughs> that moment had me, okay? My brother's a couple years younger than me. I remember he couldn't eat Cheetos or something. I don't know, something really stupid. And he said he was going to call the police or whatever, you know, these late end millennials. My mom take the cordless phone, hand it over to him and say, go call. Cause we're going to take you, it's going to be worse than here. I said, Caribbean parents, I tell you. That for me was too true to life. Anyway, I fell out when she said, not the good clothes I bought you, gave him stuff and sent him on his way. He ends up in the real life heart house. A lot of people I saw on the timeline didn't realize this was a story. Again, if you're a tea sipper, you would already know. I was like, oh shoot, lovely tea talked about this when it first came out. Cause I didn't know about this story until she talked about it. A couple who adopted all these black kids, the kids would complain to the neighbors they weren't eating. I don't know why the neighbors didn't complain to child services or maybe they did. And child services didn't die in real life, but in this story she did. And when she came in the house, she said, what's that smell? And where's the washcloth? I couldn't. I said, I can't with you, Donald Glover, in your writing. I cannot. Aquarius is in his new house with his new family, eating, that's not even food, okay? I study nutrition. I know healthy and flavorful and savory sometimes don't go together, but that was neither flavorful, healthy, or anything. I don't know. The dog was eating better than them. This is where things get really dark and I started to feel that unsettling feeling of when I first heard the true story, like these women really packed up the picnies to run them off a bridge. Like what kind of twisted sickness is this? I don't know if they weren't managing their funds, if they ran out, but it really didn't have to come to that. I just, humanity is a different type of dark and disgusting. Luckily in this twist of the tale, Aquarius swaps out corn pop. I don't know why they're trying to let the dog go. Oh wait, I do know. If you know what neighborhood I live in, if you watch the vlogs, the people around here praise the pets, treat the pets better than they do people. There are people like that in real life. Don't get it twisted. It was so hilarious how they let corn pop go, but not the kids. I was also losing it when I realized that there was little subtitles about the kid's thoughts. At first, because I'm legally blind, I didn't realize. So by the time I pressed pause and zoomed in, I only caught what the little girl said, which is my hair hurts. I said, you are so wrong for that. And I am so wrong for laughing at this moment. He goes home, eats mom's spaghetti, thank God it's seasoned. And then it gets a little horror vibe-esque and Ern wakes up. I love that episode two loops right off of that. I thought Atlanta was gonna do what it does sometimes, which is tell a story, 
just leave it off there for us to interpret and then go way left. At least this time they kept it going. Ern is in the bedroom that's clearly not his own with the chick that doesn't even speak English. Ain't got no belt, ain't got no undies. Got a lot of text messages I couldn't see. Had to rush the airport, pants dropped. I thought that would be more of a moment of violation, but it wasn't. Ends up getting to, are they in Copenhagen? To bail, paper boy out. Who wasn't trying to be bailed out? Simultaneously, Van is supposed to land. So he calls Darius, who's one of my faves. He's always on his namaste, every day type of tip. And he goes and picks up Van and they go on their separate storyline plot twist. Before I get to that, let's finish off Paperboy and Earn because there was so much, so much going on with that. Looking a lot like the Swedish Gerald that ASAP or 21 or whoever that rapper was in a couple years back. He was living nice. I looked around my studio apartment being like, hmm, I kind of like that vibe better though. It was the dimming light with the essential oils for me. What really threw me was when Paperboy laughed, he said that fabric softener though. Paperboy asks for some of the money that Earn got swindling the situation, throws it up in the air to supporters. They pass by a strange occurrence, a little kid in blackface, and they're like, what's going on? Well, the name of the episode is Santa Claus. And if you guys don't know, that is a real tradition. I don't know where I heard that from, but I heard a couple years ago, I said, come again? As if my prime minister going blackface wasn't bad enough. There's a whole season? I that I said, no, Atlanta's not gonna go. They're bringing the culture everywhere. Okay, fast forward. It's time for Paperboard to perform. He looks past the curtains. Everybody's in blackface. He said, nah, -uh. Ern's like, I got you. Ern goes to talk to the building manager, show person, whatever that weirdo guy was. I screamed at the screen run when that man was hyperventilating behind the glass door. Then when he chased Ern and ended up beating another guy in blackface, I, I, the commentary on individualism is there. Table that for a bit, let's transition to Van and Darius. I love Darius. I told you guys that before. I'll probably tell you a million times again. It's just the esoteric vibe for me. How is it they go to a thrift shop, get an address and actually go? Just take the coat and go. But no, they went and followed the lead, like follow your heart, you're in Europe after all. Why is she there? I wanna know, why is she there? Their journey leads them to a wake, but the man is not gone. So is it still called a wake? I don't know. All I do know is that windowsill moment with the Dap Dula was giving me eat, pray, love and I wasn't really here for it. I wanna know from you, do you believe that things happen for a reason and you're the right place in time? I don't, I really, really don't. And every single friend I have says that things happen for a reason. I think we give things reasons. So I'd love to know down below how you feel. I personally don't believe in the right time. You're always where you're supposed to be sentiment. We could talk about that in a Patreon pod, but sake of the video, I'd love to know what you feel about that conversation. So at one point, Van fixes herself up to go tell this man she never knew, it's okay, you can go. And that's when... I don't know if it's euthanasia. That man was fighting for his life. They dropped the curtain on him and he's just struggling there. <laughs> and Lana is sick, okay? for what seems to be eternity. You just see this man fighting. I said, he doesn't seem like he's ready to go. <laughs> I don't know. It's so bad, guys. I said, it's these moments in Atlanta that just have you feeling like, who am I to laugh at this? <laughs> oh, I literally fell out of my chair. I said, I'm done. I'm done for life. If this was the last episode of Atlanta, I'd be satisfied. Finally, Van and Ern's paths collide. They meet up in the hallway. He says it's 4 a.m. She has ice in her hand. I don't know for who or for what, but okay, go off, sis. And he goes into his bedroom to fall on his bed. Ding, 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 ding. Phone chimes again, he gets up, and that's how the episode ends. I thought that was a perfect introduction to what may be the best season of Atlanta. 
I don't want to say that yet because there's a couple episodes that, as far as TV goes, stay out of my mind. Paperboy running in the forest. I just said, wow. When Ern was Michael Jackson, because that's what he was supposed to be, right? Did I read that right, that episode? And there was a next episode where I'm just like, you guys are so wrong for this. There's a lot of you're so wrong for this moments in Atlanta. And I think that's why we love it. The writers do so well of pairing real life parody and just making us realize how sick and twisted and darkly humorous our existence is. So I love that they're bringing the culture to Amsterdam. It's like Atlanta is everywhere. We were wise. Would love to hear from you. Is there anything else? I want to know. I started Googling though. If that's an actual thing, the drop down, because I was just like, isn't there a more peaceful way to do this? I ain't trying to have no stranger tell me to go and then struggle and suffocate like that. No, 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 that's okay. That that right there, you can keep that. Cinda Claus was real, the heart was real, the Lake Lanier was real, but I wanna know if there's anything else that was real that you guys researched, found out, let me know down below. If you haven't already, hit the like if you enjoyed this video. If you wanna see me do more synopsis, that's how you say it. Also let me know, and until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed, love and later.